Hey guys, one of the things I love about YouTube is interacting with my viewers. Last week I heard from Dick, who lives in Alaska. He's involved in a project to renovate an old steam locomotive. He's also a model builder and has taken an interest in lost PLA casting to manufacture some parts for a 1 8 scale loco. I loved this idea and asked if he'd got any files that he could share and he sent me this. This 3D drawing was created by Dick after researching some original builder's drawings. It's a crosshead, which I understand is a mechanism to guide a piston rod. I just had to have a go at casting it. Unfortunately, the size is right on the limit of what I can cast at the moment, as I'll explain more later. Printing vertically did a beautiful job. In February 1965, the Alaska Railroad announced that Alaska's last steam locomotive, Engine 557, was to be sold to a scrap metal dealer in the lower 48, while her sister, Engine 556, was donated to the city of Anchorage and placed on the park strip for display. Engine 557 was to be dismantled and sent to the scrap line. On first inspection, this doesn't look too bad. The shape is good and the rivets jump out nicely. But there is some tiny surface pitting, and I mean tiny. If the intention is to paint this piece, then it's fine. I really think a good primer would flatten out these imperfections. But if it's going to be polished, I think it could highlight them. Let's try it. Yep, as I suspected, some of these imperfections are just a little too deep to easily polish away without damaging the detail. And the shiny surface does highlight the flaws in my eye. So what's caused these imperfections? Well, I don't think it's porosity. If we look at the sprue, that seems fine. There's evidence of printer lines showing good definition, and there's no sign of nasty holes. So what else could it be? Well, I suspect it's a size thing. When I spoke with Dick, I told him I'd probably need to scale down his pattern for casting, and I could have done that. But I wanted to test my theory. I've noticed the limitations of my casting setup for a while now, and invariably, if faults creep in, it's here closest to the pore and furthest from the vacuum. I do seem to need a little height from the pouring basin to the pattern, and this project was right on the line. You can see that one of the sprues here failed to develop, and others are also pitted. At the other end, the sprues are fine. So closest to the vacuum seems best, and that would make sense. The size of my flask is always going to limit what I can cast, but using a solid flask also has its limitations. 
the vacuum is only pulling from one end. So the pull is bound to be weaker the further from the vacuum source we go. The way around this is to use a perforated flask. These holes allow the vacuum to pull from the bottom and the sides. Now, I'm not writing off my solid flask. It's great for small objects, but if I want bigger, then I need the perforated flask, and this requires a different vacuum system. And as you've probably guessed, I've already got one in mind. My new system will cope with various sizes of perforated flasks, giving me lots more casting opportunities. It will also cope with solid flasks. This isn't new information to my patrons. I've already told them about my plans for a new system, and I've even hinted about it on Instagram. In truth, all that's stopping me now is money. I'm not a wealthy guy, and running this channel is a surprisingly expensive hobby. The kind PayPal donations I receive, and the regular support from my patrons, helps me keep things going, but ultimately, it still leaves me saving the pennies. So if you want to see projects like my new vacuum system come to fruition, if you want me to demonstrate how to make equipment far cheaper than you can buy it, and if you can spare a little something, please consider a PayPal donation, or even better, a regular contribution through Patreon. All these proceeds go to running my channel and bringing you original content. So I hope my flawed casting hasn't put Dick off. Just because this casting wasn't perfect this time, it doesn't mean I won't achieve better results next time round with the same equipment that I've already got. But I do think it will be much easier with my future system. If you've got a project that you'd like to tell me about, please drop me a line. If there's anything you'd like to see me sell on my Etsy store, just give me a yell and I'll see what I can do. So that's it for now guys. Take care and thanks for watching.